Hi, I'm Russ Lakis, software engineer at Ophir Spyrocon. In this video, we will introduce you to BeamGage Automation, a .NET software interface that allows LabVIEW, Visual Basic, C++, and C-Sharp programmers to directly control BeamGage from their own application. With your purchase of BeamGage, we offer one free hour of advanced automation support, with continued support at an hourly fee of $150. And now here's Brad Christensen, our principal software engineer. Thanks for watching. Hi, my name is Brad Christensen. I'm with SpireCon. I'm one of the developers here, and I was responsible for developing the automation interface. Today I'm going to present that to you a little bit, and give you an idea of how it works. Hopefully with any questions, but we're going to walk through an example and help you understand how to develop an automation client. With the automation interface, when you install BeamGage under your programs files, you should be able to find the documentation under all programs, Spyrocon, BeamGage Professional, Documentation, there's an automation interface link at that point. If you click there, you get an HTML page that is the application programming interface for the automation client. It's full of hyperlinks and it's somewhat context sensitive where you can navigate, look through all the classes that are available, and quickly you can return back to the main page if you ever get lost. Each, each link on, each, on the pages uh, are highlighted in blue and you can go to them as, as you continue to look through examples and as you continue to develop your own interface. When you install BeamGage, and you also have an example for LabVIEW. We're gonna, today we're going to talk about LabVIEW. You can see here that we have several examples. Uh, most of our customers are using LabVIEW. The automation interface works with any .NET language. LabVIEW supports .NET as well as Visual Basic, C++, the, command, the common language runtime, and C Sharp. But today we'll go ahead and talk about LabVIEW. Again, in your, in your installation directory, under Automation Examples, LabVIEW 2009, there is a Total Peak Chart example, which I have open here. And the first thing you want to do is declare an object called an automation, Automated Beam Gauge, as we said here. So with our example, we'll go ahead and click on ours. Um, and then there, once you've done that, once you've created your automation client, there are four major things that you need to be able to do when creating an automation client. And that is obviously starting and shutting down. Any automation client that's begun through an automation interface must be shut down through that automation interface. The second thing you might be interested in is controlling BeamGage or controlling the interfaces that are for BeamGage. You may need to register for events so you can respond to what BeamGage is doing and uh, process data or, or read out results at that time. And finally, obviously, getting that data or the results from BeamGage. Those are the four major areas that any automation client would be interested in doing. The .NET interface for LabVIEW via BeamGage is not a driver for a camera. Rather, the automation interface through LabVIEW will talk to BeamGage, and BeamGage houses the driver for that camera. So it is actually BeamGage that talks to the camera, and it's LabVIEW that talks to BeamGage. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and pull up the block diagram. It's a little bit quicker. You can see the documentation here, but it'll be a little easier probably to see it from the block diagram as I explain what we do. As a, as a user, you want to create an automated BeamGage object that will start BeamGage and initialize, the, initialize your session for you. From there, that automated BeamGage client with your reference, you can take and start registering for events or anything here, anything that BeamGage has. You'll notice that the automated BeamGage, if we go back to our documentation, automated BeamGage gives you access to several interfaces. Each interface is, is prefixed or prefixed with the letter I and then a name that should be intuitive as to what you want to do. For example, we have instance. This deals with starting and stopping the, the, the application, save and load setup, save and load data, etc. Here are results, be able to get results. 
Each one of these has their own functions. If you go into instance, you can see there's only one available function, and that is to shut down. So I use a load setup. You've got save setup, load setup. So each interface that you retrieve from the beam gauge gives you different access to functionality that beam gauge provides. In this case, in our lab view example, we're going to go ahead and pull up a frame priority frame and register for an event. Frame priority frame, if we click on a frame priority frame, if we go look at IA frame, frame priority frame here, you can see that it gives you an IA frame class with that or interface. With that you can ask for all kinds of things. Get the data from the array, check if it has data, see how big it is, etc. In our case, or for our example, we're just going to register for that on priority or that priority frame event. And when we get a frame, we're going to call a sub VI. Our sub VI at that time takes our automated beam gauge and pulls out the results, the power energy results interface. It takes out the total and the peak. So if we want to look at our power energy results interface. Results power energy here, you can see that they're I'm clicking on the wrong guy there. You want to click on the interface itself. You see you can pull out total, pull out peak, power density minimum. So these are results that come from beam gauge. Once we pull those out into our sub VI, we're going to chart them here in a waveform chart. You can see we have here. So through our VI, we get a notification. We're going to notify our chart when new results come in and those will be plotted. In this continuing while loop here, we have several commands that can be issued to beam gauge. If we look at our front panel that we've, decide, we've, got, that we've designed, we have three things we want to do with beam gauge. Namely, we want to be able to start and stop our data acquisition. We want to be able to create an UltraCal or UltraCal beam gauge, and we want to be able to shut down our server. This shutting down our server is more tied in with our starting and shutting down lab view. So let's go ahead and step over to that real quick and take a look at how that's done. So with our stop server, what happens here is once we hit the stop server button, we go ahead and check to see if the data source is running. We issue a stop to the data source, release out of our while loop through our automation beam gauge reference. We then get the instance interface and call shutdown. So that's pretty much how you shut down beam gauge. Grab the instance, call shutdown. Other controls that we have in Beam Gauge, UltraCal, if we look at our front panel, we have an UltraCal button here. So UltraCal, what it does is it pulls from our automation beam, automated Beam Gauge class, the calibration function, and calls UltraCal on it for our start stop data server. So we'll look at our button here, the start stop button. When I click that button, it goes and gets our data source, checks the, the status of our data source. If it's stopped or default, it will call start on that data source. If it's already started, it will call stop. We'll, I'll give you an example to show you how those guys work in just a second. So now we know how to start and stop our automation client. We know how to control the beam gauge interfaces. We know how to register for an event, as was explained, it was registered for the on new frame event. And we've seen how to extract the data by pulling out an interface and, and extracting whatever you need from it. So now we're going to go ahead and run our example and see how it works. See we hit run, beam gauge initializes, starts up. I do have it hooked up to a data source that just looks at a, at a grid on a camera. So we should be able to get values come through right away and see our chart running. So you can see the beam gauge is indeed running. If we pull up our front panel, go ahead and reduce our block diagram so we can see them both running together. Get our block diagrams out of the way. You see beam gauge running. You see that I have the ability to start, stop it or vice versa, stop it, start it. I can ultra cal.
and I can stop my server. Shuts down beam gauge. That pretty much concludes our demo. If you need any more assistance, feel free to contact our service department and they can answer any other questions. Thanks.